Hi, what is the meaning of value added taxes and how do we configure and use them in SAP S4HANA? This is what I'm going to explain and demonstrate in the video today. To understand the meaning of value added taxes, let's assume that we are the owners of a store and we sell only one product, shares for example. Now we sell the shares for 100 USD each. And also, in our country, the tax rate is 10%. So whenever we sell a share to a customer, the customer has to pay 100 USD for the share, and he also has to pay 10%, which is 10 USD for taxes. And this 10 USD doesn't belong to us. We have to pay it to the government. But there is also one more thing. As a store, we buy the shares from a factory that's also inside the country, and we buy them for 80 USD each. So whenever we buy a share from the factory, we have to pay 80 USD for the price and we also pay 10% taxes, which is 8 USD. So now you see we have collected 10 USD taxes from the customer, but we have also paid 8 USD taxes to our supplier. So the balance is only 2 USD and this is what we have to pay to the government. Now the taxes that we collect from our customer is called output value added tax because this is the tax we collect when putting products out of our store. And the taxes that we pay to our supplier is called input value added tax, because this is the tax we pay when putting products into our store. And at the end of every tax period, let's say for example three months, the store has to make a report showing the amount of taxes we have collected from our customers and the amount of taxes we have paid to our suppliers and the difference that we have to pay to the government. And in case if the amount we paid is higher than what we collected, then this means the government actually owes you money. And in this case, you can ask to deduct this amount from your tax payment for the next period. Now I'm going to demonstrate on SAP S4HANA a transaction using the value added tax. Then I'm going to show you the reports that you can use to report your taxes to the government. And also I'm going to show you an overview of the most important configuration steps for value added taxes. I am going to start by posting a supplier invoice and this time I'm going to use the value added tax. So the transaction to post a supplier invoice is FB60 as I explained in the video before. And the company code I'm using is 1010. So you can change the company code from this. Click here and you can select any company code you want. So the vendor account I'm going to use is this one. You can use any one. And the invoice date is going to be the same as the posting date. The reference is the vendor invoice number. And the GL account I'm going to use here is going to be an, an other expenses GL account, which is used for general expenses without reference to a supplier purchase order. But before I do this, now I'm going to insert the tax code. So the situation is like this. Um, I am an accounts payable accountant. I received an invoice from a supplier and the invoice is always mentioning the taxes that is included and the total amount including taxes. So let's assume that the invoice is for 1000 and the taxes is for 10%. So the total is 1100. So this is what I'm going to insert here, 1100. And the tax code I'm going to select as you have so many tax codes here. The one I'm going to use is input tax code, 10%. Why is this an input tax? Because this is a supplier invoice. And as I explained, supplier invoices use input tax codes. So I'm going to use V2, 10%. And then to calculate the taxes, you have two options. You can either select this checkbox, calculate tax, and SAP will automatically calculate the tax from the 1100, or you can put the tax amount manually here. So for me, I'm going to choose the automatic option. Click here. Now I'm going to put the GL account, this one. The amount is also 1,100. The tax code automatically comes from the header. So this one automatically comes as V2 once you select V2 here. You can have multiple line items in the same invoice. For example, if you are buying different services or products from the supplier, and the different products or services can have different tax codes based on the laws in your country. So you can select different tax codes here. Now I'm going to go and put a cost center or a costing object because this is an expense account. So I'm going to use this one. You can use any cost center. 
uh, and now I'm going to simulate the financial entry so we can see the financial impact of using a tax code so click on simulate this is the financial entry I'm going to post so we have a credit to the supplier for 1100 and we have a debit to other expenses account this one and we have a debit to the input tax account 100 and this is the account that we are going to net with the output tax account and the difference is going to be paid to the government now I'm going to post the financial entry click post this is how you use the tax codes in the supplier invoices in the next video next week I'm going to explain how you can post an invoice with a reference to a purchase order and then I'm also going to mention how you can use the tax codes there now I'm going to display a report that you can use to calculate the tax that you have to submit to the government there are many options but the one I like to use is the GL account line items display and this is SAP S4 HANA so the transaction I'm going to use is FBL3H so this is only available in SAP S4 HANA if you are using ECC then you can use FBL3N but for now I'm using SAP S4 HANA so I'm using FBL3H enter then you can put the input and the output tax accounts in this field so I already know the tax accounts I am going to show you how to get them but for now this is the one I use for output taxes and this is the one I use for input taxes Excuse. then click on all items and run the report you can run the report with specific dates if you are trying to run it for like three months or for one specific month but for me I'm going to run it for everything so click on all items and I'm going to leave the posting date empty then click on execute so this is the report and it is very simple you have to pay 3143 euros to the government why because we have output taxes tax type A of 4949 and we have input taxes tax type V of 1806 so the balance is 3143 and this is the amount you have to submit to the government you can also see the different line items here so if you click on any document number here you can display the document and see why do we have to pay or why do we have this tax so this is the financial entry so we here we have 1000 credit to a supplier we have debit 909 other expenses and we have a tax of 90.91 so this is the report I like to use when submitting the taxes to the government you can also export it to Excel you can click here open this and then you can export it to Excel from this click here and export to spreadsheet so this is a very simple report you can use to submit your taxes to the government and also it is available in SAP ECC and in SAP S4 HANA now I'm going to display an overview of the configuration for value added tax to go to SAP configuration go to transaction SPRO enter then click on SAP reference IMG the value added tax configuration can be found under financial accounting financial accounting global settings tax on sales and purchases then we have the basic settings calculation and posting you can click on the documentation icons here to display the SAP help and if you open the basic settings the first step we have to do is to define a calculation procedure for the taxes so click on check calculation procedure define procedures and I'm going to display for example the one that we use for Germany because this is the example I'm using so select this and then click on control data so for example the input taxes is calculated based on the step 100 this one base amount so this is actually how SAP knows how to calculate the taxes so for example if we say the input tax is 10% 10% of what this is how SAP knows so now I'm saying 10% from the base amount and this is very helpful if you have different taxes applied for example for sales tax we usually have a sales tax and we have a value added tax so should be should the value added tax be calculated before the sales tax or after or it can be used in multiple cases if you are in whatever you are using different taxes so this is how SAP knows how to calculate each tax 
then we assign this procedure to the country because the text configuration is country specific so here you can find assign country to calculation procedure so for example if we go to DE Germany then it is assigned to 0TXD these are the most two important steps then you define the tax codes there are many other steps you can go through the the uh, SAP configuration here you can click on this documentation icon to display the help for any of them these can be used in different tax situations but the ones I showed you now are the basic ones then the third step I'm going to show you is how to define a tax code for example the tax code we used is v2 for input tax 10 percent so go to calculation define tax codes country is de the tax code to display the available tax codes you can click here so these are the tax codes defined for germany now the one i used is v2 10 percent input tax domestic so double click enter so this is the one we used as you see the text type is input tax v2 so in case of output tax this one will be a and then the input tax field is filled with 10 percent so if this is an output tax this one will be empty and this one will be filled now to display the accounts we are going to use for taxes you can click on tax accounts and the chart for account is defined per company code so the one i'm using is ycoa so this is our input tax GL account and the same for output tax you are going to find another account here okay you can also change the description of the tax code so click on properties so this one is 10% input tax domestic and you can change it this is the basic configuration for value added taxes there are many other options and many other steps but I'm not going to go through them in the video today there is actually a lot of blogs and articles available online that explain in detail how you can configure the value added taxes and I'm going to leave you a link in the description below that you can check and this is it for the video today hope it was helpful to everyone thank you for watching and see you next week thank you for watching my videos don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel like the Facebook page follow me on LinkedIn and also help me by sharing the videos so other people can find them